Today we're doing an install on a versatile Delta Track machine. We'll go through some of the steps, how that, the quick attach for the Prairie tile plow goes on the machine. Today we're installing a new seven foot universal tile plow uh, from Prairie, the Pro 7. Uh, we're gonna go through a couple of the features on the new Universal. As you can see, uh, you maybe notice uh, there's nothing on the front. We'll be putting an adapter on there so you can convert it if you have a steerable plow or a steerable tractor or steerable plow. Uh, twin, typically we'll use a steerable if you have uh, maybe a twin track tractor or if you're on a, a dozer or some other kind of piece of equipment, then, then the plow will act as a steering mechanism. Otherwise, today we're gonna be putting some straight arms on to adapt to our quad track or our delta track versatile. Some of the new features that we have on the plow. So we, we've been getting a lot of questions about this, uh, the orange arm on here and what it does. It's actually a transportation lock. So if you're driving down the road and you have a failure of your elevation cylinders, this will lock the shank up, uh, your knife up in an up position uh, and to help prevent any kind of damage occurring. Uh, on the new Universal Plow, we've changed how the shipping brackets are. So this orange bracket down here is just a temporary shipping bracket. You'll remove uh, the six or the five bolts that are holding on, three down here and two up here. And that will separate the shank from the front frame. Those are just shipping and then those, you can, you can save them if you're ever to uh, sell the plow or to, or to you know, long distances. Uh, the reason we do that is because the cylinders aren't energized with hydraulics. So both the elevation and the pitch cylinders don't come with oil in them. Uh, basically, we don't want to ship all of that oil because uh, a lot of the modern tractors are very specific in the type of oil that they use. First step we're going to do is make sure our hardware is going to go in on the machine. Uh, sometimes uh, the hardware will go right in, other times there might be some paint buildup or the hole isn't quite true from the, uh, from the factory. Uh, so what we'll do is drop our hardware in, does it go in, can we drop it down in there? Sometimes it's, it you know, binds a little bit, a little tap on a hammer will take it in. If you can't get the hardware to go in, you'll end up just uh, taking some sort of burr grinder to clean out the paint in the holes and you'll go through and clean every one of them out. So in this case we've already done that, uh, so our hardware is ready to go and basically on the install we're going to be picking up on 10 different points. So it's the holes in the versatile are already there, so we're going to work on you know, these five holes right here is the mount. On the opposite side we're also going to hit those five holes, but over here we do have uh, the hydraulics that we'll have to relocate slightly. So it basically will unbolt that, we'll tie it up, and uh, we'll lift it up and out of the way. We'll might have to make a, a few modifications to the underside to make sure that we can uh, get all of our hardware back in. All right, so on the back of the Versatile, we'll see uh, numerous different valve options that are available. This is probably one of the most common uh, valve banks that's off to the side. Uh, very easy to work with with our system. Um, we'll just, we'll end up moving it slightly to get our uh, mount on, on the machine. There are some newer valve options uh, that we'll have to, you'll probably have to contact Crary uh, where they have uh, the valve banks that fill the entire area uh, if you've got a piece of equipment that has those on there. To remove the valve body on the Versal Delta Track, we're going to need a few different tools. A 27 millimeter wrench, a 30 millimeter wrench, a couple of long extensions, a swivel, and a uh, 30 millimeter impact. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna remove three of the bolts and we're gonna leave one in there so the valve sack doesn't come off the machine. Uh, then we'll get it, end up getting it tied up and out of the way while we bring in uh, the quick attach mount itself. All right, now that we've removed our hardware, or loosened our hardware, on this installation, uh, we're just getting it up, secured out of the way and rocked so we have room to get our quick tash underneath. So what we've done is we've actually left, we put the, the rear bolt back in and left that in there, uh, put the nut back on the backside, uh, left the bolt loose. And so we can actually tie it off under the track in this instance. Your setup might be a little bit different because you might not have a Delta track, you might have a wheeled machine. The, the key point is, is you need to get this up and out of the way to be able to get the mount into this hole. All right, right now we're getting the quick catch chained up and we'll be bringing it over to put it on the machine. So one of the things that's gonna help you out when we're doing this is making sure that the quick catch is, is balanced and at the angle of the machine. Right now we're, we're readjusting the chains. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the quick catch itself is level. It'll make it a lot easier to bring it into the machine and get it installed.
So what we did there is we just wanted to get that one secured uh, so we can position and get all the other hardware in. Now we know we're somewhat safe as we move it in here. We'll, we'll continue to put the other um, nine bolts in and we'll keep going. So now we've loosened our strap that was supporting the, the valve body. We've let it rest back down on the query mount and we're just gonna go ahead and stick our hardware in. So now the next step is gonna be putting our spacer in the other side. So we'll remove the other OEM hardware. This is a spacer we'll be putting underneath the valve bank to get it level. So we'll just slide her down from the top. Right now we're reinstalling the, the OEM hardware. Our next step will be to go through and torque down all the hardware that we just installed and that'll complete the process of uh, getting this quick attach mount installed. So when we torque down all of our hardware now, we're gonna torque it down to 675 foot-pounds. Uh, that's for the M22 bolts that we have installed here. So now up to this point, we've got our quick attach installed. Uh, and got all of our valve bank back all in line and everything torqued down. So uh, there are some options on here. So if you have a power beyond or anything like that, uh, there is a mount up here to be able to remount that. Uh, this, this tractor didn't have that or wasn't set up for it, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but really all of this equipment will stay with the machine now. It doesn't need to be removed to, to continue using everything. So our next step, we're gonna back up to the plow and get it connected up. Right now we're going to be mounting a standard mount uh, to a plow. So the first steps we'll do is we'll get it marked out. So if you go into your owner's manual, we'll be able to find that dimension and we'll get this marked out. So we're going to measure from the bottom of the draw bar because that's where it's going to be sitting on your tractor up to a height here and we'll get that uh, measured in there. So that'll, that'll be different depending on what mount you have and the tractor you have. So we'll start doing that. Now we've just measured up based on our, you know, our, our tractor and our mount from the, we'll look at the manual, uh, from the bottom of the drawbar up and now we have our positioning for our quick attach adapter. So this is our standard adapter. We have a number of different adapters based on the tractor or style of attachment that you have on the back of your tractor. We'll get our forklift in here and we're gonna lift around these lift points. That'll give a nice bounce for us to get the brackets on the back. On a lot of our mounts, or our universal adapters for our plows, we do have lift hooks. Not all of them will have that, but a lot of times we'll have a, a lifting point that'll help balance it so it'll be bring up square when you're lifting it. So these are directional brackets. The left and right are the same, uh, but we have a notch up on the top here uh, for so we have clearance uh, for the arms. Uh, this is a seven foot plow, so we probably we're not going to have a clearance issue. Uh, six foot plow is a little bit shorter, so then we started getting into that. Positioned up on our forklift here, we're going to bring it in the machine. We're going to line up the bottom of our adapter to the line that we had put on earlier onto the front of the plow. Okay, so next is we've got two sets of hardware in the kit. We'll have a longer and a shorter one. And the reason we have two different ones is this is uh, an adapter that'll work both with our six foot and our seven foot plow. So the difference on the front of the plow on a six foot, this is gonna be a narrower here where this is on the, we got a wider frame on a seven foot. So that's why we use a longer bolt. So now we're gonna start installing all of our hardware. Let's get everything prepped in all the holes. We're gonna take our, our mounting bracket for the back and we're gonna make sure that the angle is face, facing up to the top. So for those that are wondering why we actually do a universal mount like this is uh, as 
a farmer moves tractor from tractor to tractor, the, the type of adapter on the front changes. So we used to weld everything to the front, but now when you upgrade your tractor, a lot of times uh, it would force you to trade in your plow, uh, make modifications to the plow. This makes it a lot easier to bolt and unbolt as you upgrade your equipment over time. So now we've got this lined up on this side. It's a little bit low on that side, but we'll get this side snug down a little bit. That way we can lift with the forklift and get everything nice and level. On the back side here, we can see that this is a little bit crooked. We'll lift up on, the, on this as we tighten the bolts down to get it into position. We're gonna go ahead and jack this up. We can see that the draw bar is really low, so we're gonna get it jacked up into position. You're gonna wanna do both jacks evenly to keep the, the plow level. Next step now, we're gonna go and tighten all of our universal adapter mounts all the way down. And then we'll start taking all of our uh, transfer our shipping brackets off and then getting our knife tip installed. So we're gonna remove the knife tip, uh, set it off to the side. If we come in here, we'll be able to see the, the hammer strap adjustment brackets. They're, they're down installed they're in the, on the shipping bracket. So we'll remove these little hexagon uh, shaped brackets and we'll keep them for later. We'll also keep the hardware from this, because that'll be what we install it with. Just so you can see, this is what the adjustment of bracket. So we can see the holes are in different positions, so as we install them up there, we'll be able to change the height for the different thicknesses of draw bars. All right, so the next step, we're gonna remove these uh, transportation or shipping brackets. Uh, anytime you're doing this, make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. Uh, don't have any of your you know, feet or hands underneath the, the the shank because it, it can drop. Uh, remember, any, all these cylinders aren't energized, so just be careful of that and, and uh, keep yourself safe. So we're gonna end up reusing most of the hardware that we just took off. Uh, longer bolts will be used to reinstall the knife tip. Bring that in. So we've just installed our knife tip. Uh, the next step will be to energize some of the cylinders. We'll get everything nice and square to the ground and then we'll be able to drop our locking pins in. So the next step, we're gonna try to raise it up and lower it. You know, when we don't have a hole in the ground to try to get as much air out of those cylinders, it probably won't get everything, but it'll get a lot of it out to help lead those cylinders out. We're going to put our locks in on the top. This is a transportation bracket, so when you're going down the road at 25 miles an hour, and let's say you have a failure of a cylinder or a seal, we don't want this shake dropping down on the ground. So, the way it works, we'll pull the pin here, we'll pull a pin up here. Plow is locked into transportation mode. So now we're going to install your hammer strap stops. So the reason we put these in underneath here, we'll talk about that, is basically we don't want the plow to ride up against your hammer strap. So as you're moving along, uh, the plow will ride up here. It can move up in there, and it can damage your hammer strap. It can, uh, you know, affect your grade. So what we'll do is these are adjustable. There's the holes are in different spots. So you're going to slide it in there and. What you're gonna to wanna to get is about a quarter inch gap or less to your draw bar. And so we've got that lined up. We can see the gap in there and then we'll reinstall the hardware uh, that we're reusing from the shipping brackets. 
And then we'll repeat this on the other side. So now that we've added our hammer strap stops, that completes the installation of the plow onto the tractor. Uh, in our next step, we're gonna be attaching a, a boot to the back and we'll show you that next. So on this one, uh, the protective coating over the stainless steel hasn't been removed. We wanna expose that stainless steel to get you uh, better scouring uh, and, and an easier pull through the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get that removed right now. All right, and we'll repeat that on the other side. So now we're gonna be hooking up a boot. It's pretty simple, pull your main pin and then uh, bring it in. When we ship these units from the factory, this is a fairly new unit. Uh, we do put a lanolin style oil to protect the cylinders and you should be doing that at the end of the season uh, when you're putting them to storage just to help uh, prolong the life of your, your cylinders. Well, we'll recommend you to clean, just get all that dirt off the best you can. And again, you should be doing this at the end of the season. All right, one of the last things we're gonna do to finish up this plow is to get the SMV symbol turned around.